Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! This is the first video in the series about building this EL84 spud amp. And I've learned that what a spud amp means is one tube. Well, maybe this is a triple spud. That'd be a fun name for it, right? Why don't we just call it that, our little triple spud. Anyway, we've got two EL84 or six BQ5 output tubes, and then we have a six CA4 rectifier tube. So we're going to be using tube rectification. We got a 270 DAX Hammond transformer that's a little bigger than the one we used on our 6BM8 amp. And we're going to try a couple of these OT10SE musical power supplies output transformers that I got off eBay. And these are the four hole mounting kind. Some of the earlier ones had holes on each end to mount. If you have those and wanted to use them, you probably have to get a little, little bit wider amp because you can see, or a little bit wider chassis, you can see how it's getting a little cramped here even with these kind. And you'd have to space them apart further and have some more chassis space for the other bolt hole. So you probably have to add a couple of inches to the width. And we're gonna use these little silver tube rings. I think I'm gonna paint the output transformers black to match the power transformer. I think to change things up, I may use silver hardware this time to kind of, you know, in the past I've replaced these with like black oxide hardware. So I may leave the silver hardware in these and there's not gonna be anything on the front of the amp. If I'm gonna put a indicator light, I think I'm just gonna have a little LED sticking through right here in the top. Maybe get one with a little a little bezel on it, but put it right here in the top and leave the front completely blank. I'm going to put the power switch. This time I'm just going to use this little on-off power switch. It's a little cheap, well, cheap one off Amazon. And it's just going to go back here in the back corner. We have an IEC socket back here, four speaker terminals, and then the RCA jacks. That's it. It's going to be minimal fabrication. I think I'm going to try a little different technique on the IEC socket this time, so look forward to see it showing you that. Maybe it'll make life a little easier. And then, again, I'll have the bomb up and the schematic up soon. The main reason I wanted to build this is I built this preamp because I had a lot of people going. They wanted to see a preamp build, so it's like, okay, here's a preamp build. And I'm like, well, what am I going to drive with this thing? And Somebody sent this one, and I've got another one sitting over here. I wanted to do like a preamp shootout. Each one of these has a different uh, volt peak-to-peak -peak output. And so all of them are way above what any of my integrated amps need. They all will drive off 3 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, and even the weakest one was five times that. So it would be one of those things you turn the volume knob like you know an eighth of a turn and you're into distortion. Or you have to turn down the sensitivity on the main amp, and then you've got like 12x7s driving, 6s7s driving the output tube. It's like, what, what, what are we even do? Why are we doing this? And it didn't make any sense to me to have a preamp for an amplifier that doesn't need a preamp. So let's build an amplifier that needs a preamp. And hopefully we can learn some stuff from this. Uh, there may be some different ways of doing the uh, local negative feedback that I'm going to experiment with. There's a kind of unique way this one's done, but I've got some ideas as well. So I think this is going to be a very fun project. This is going to be the probably the next stepping stone from the little passive headphone box as far as complexity on building a project. And this should be fairly simple. There's not a lot of wiring inside. This does have high voltage inside it. So be warned, be safe, go watch my video on high voltage, heed the warnings at the start of every video. If you get shocked, too bad. I can't, it's not my, not my, not my problem. So anyway, 
Let's kind of go over the layout real quick. One of the things that I really try to do in my amps is keep the power supply on one side and then keep the audio on the other. And I really don't like these amps that put the power transformer in the middle and then have the output transformers on each side. So what we've done here is the power transformer is over on this side. The power switch is going to be over this corner. The rectifier tube is going to be in the front. This little choke is going to be over here on this side, probably turned sideways like this, right in front of the power switch on the inside. And these filter capacitors, they're all going to be on this side. We're going to keep everything related to the power over here and then send the B plus over to the audio section. I'm not as concerned about the output transformers being a little closer together. See a lot of amps like that. Doesn't seem to cause any problems. You know, you don't want to like butt them up against each other, but I think they can be, you know, fairly close to each other. It's not a big deal. If you notice, this is turned 90 degrees. The laminations are for the output transformers. And there's a reason for that. You don't want the inductance from this getting picked up by these and then you end up with the hum in your speakers. So I hope that kind of explains the layout. Again, the wiring in this thing is going to be super easy. It's not going to take a lot of tools. You do need to, I'm going to, you know, if you want to try to use a whole saw, go ahead. There, I'm sure for people in the comments going, oh yeah, whole saws work great for that. Maybe I'm just derpy. When I've tried to use a whole saw, the results looked less than good. And maybe I'm trying to was trying to use a cheap hole saw. Maybe there's some, you know, some nice quality ones that actually cut good. And I was just using some cheap China ones. But the two I've tried were garbage. And trying to drill holes in metal this thick was not fun. Now maybe on aluminum it'll be fine. And if you want to build this out of aluminum, you can. I'm recommending using a steel powder coated chassis. I know there's some people that say that steel transmits magnetism and you'll pick it up by the output transformers. I've never had that happen. I've built several amps using these steel chassis from Hammond and they're dead silent with your ear just jammed up into the speaker. So I'm not concerned about that. But what I was going to say before I got sidetracked on the chassis material, Go get a chassis punch. These things aren't that expensive. You're only going to need one size for this project. And it's a very common size for these nine pin tubes. Three quarter inch works. I've got this one I've got. Let me see. I'm trying to remember exactly what size this one is. My, this is an 18.6 millimeter that fits real snug on these nine pin sockets. But a three quarter is going to be real close or 19 millimeters. Anything right, right around in there is going to work great. It cuts a perfectly beautiful hole. You don't have to stress about the hole not being nice, that the tube's coming through. And then if you don't use these little dress-up rings, you don't have to worry. They'll, it'll look great. But I just, that's kind of my signature look, so we're going to be putting them on here. Again, there's no volume control, so you're really not going to have anything on the front of the amp. If you wanted to put the power switch in the front, you could. It's going to end up with the wiring being shorter on the side, so that's where I'm going to put it. But, you know, if you're planning on putting this thing where you need to be able to turn it on and off on the front, you could put the power switch there. Again, DIY. You can do it how you want. You can paint the transformers purple if you want. You can do whatever you want. That's, that's the joy of doing a DIY. So, anyway... That's kind of the layout of this. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that you might need out of the ordinary. Oh, go ahead and get on Amazon or somewhere and buy one of these little sets of grommets. Um, this is a little Ohaha kit. Pfft, you know, I don't know, but it's M3 through M12 grommets. And it's got a nice assortment of each size. And you're going to need these where the wires for the transformers go through the top. And somebody else asked, like, what kind of hardware do I need to get? I use 440, which is like a number four screw, 40 thread. 3 8 inch will work for just about everything. And then 
get some of the little, uh, they're called keeper nuts or K-nuts. They have the little star washer built on them. And then to mount the iron, I use 1024, and it's all buttonhead Allen hardware, black anodized. Again, 3 8 inches fine. It kind of covers different thicknesses of material. You know, I bought bags of 100 of each of them a long time ago and just keep them here. So anytime I need some hardware, it's there. The other thing you're going to need are some of these little terminal strips. Probably best to just buy these little five terminal ones with the center one connected to the ground like that or the, the mounts in the center one. You can always cut these down to the three ones if that's all you need or if you need four ones you can just cut one of the ends off. I mean if you get some of these you'll be good to go for almost any kind of application you can figure out how to make them work so I like these ones that are the little bigger size that have the hole in the bottom and the top there's some different style ones but these seem to work really well so you might want to pick up you know a little pack of those to have on hand too I mean some of this stuff I just kind of keep in stock because I'm always building stuff but again the bomb I'll try to cover everything that you need so that's pretty much it for this first episode. I think this is going to be a really fun build, and it's kind of a you know, side project to these preamps that hopefully I can get built in three, four episodes, and then we can jump back into doing some really good solid testing on these preamps and see how they perform when you're actually putting them in a service into a system that needs their amplification. Anyway, hope you're enjoying this series and the channel. If you are, please subscribe, please like the video, and we'll see you soon for some more EL84 fun. Have a great day.